Good morning friends, this is Shomna Chattopadhyay from the Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIT ISM Thanbad, India. Today we are going to discuss about tube and man pipe manufacturing. Why these are the things to be discussed? The reason is their relevance in a good standard of living for any country whether it is a developing country or it is a developed country because a lot of materials will come to our houses through those pipes a lot of feed has to be given for conveying materials and especially fluids to the factories and industrial application by those pipes and tubes so they have a terrific importance in the GDP of a country and very specifically a country like India and China where it is growing growing very very fast and the standard of living of the people are coming in a very established way with a sustainable basis with some kind of growth so role of these subjects are becoming more and more relevant so we have to know these things and how we can manufacture that is essential here our learning objectives will be the first one is the definition of pipes and tubes we have to know what is pipe what is tube and definitely we have to know what is the difference between the pipes and tubes then specifications specifications are absolutely important because specification will lead to the selection of the right kind of subjects without any ambiguity. Engineering is a domain knowledge of specification. Many of the cases in the views of the engineering knowledge, people refer to specifications, how people are knowledgeable about their specifications. So their knowledge is tested with the acquaintance with the specifications of these relevant subject it is true for all branch and true for tubes and pipes also then important manufacturing methods how those things are to be manufactured in large scale last part is extrusion mechanism of pipe manufacturing so that also has to be understood in order to know how it is to be done Again, I want to emphasize for a country like India, still many, many villages like say places of Rajasthan, places of maybe Gujarat, some difficult access, difficult to access places. The pipeline waters are still not coming appropriately. So pipes has to be laid. And pipeline gases, very few cities, very few places in India, pipeline gases are supplied. But it is required. If it is there, then definitely we do not have to carry the cylinders. And the pipeline supply is also important in today's perspective. We know that the bone of contention of war and all those feelings is very much there with Europe and Russia in terms of the supply of all those oil and gas through those pipelines laid under the Baltic Sea and other parts. So this has a terrific importance not only at country wise, inter country, intercontinental importance of these kind of subjects. So we have to know how to specify that and how to manufacture that. The definition of pipe is pipe is a hollow section with round cross section for the conveyance of the product. This round keyword is there. Pipe means round cross section. And main activity conveyance of the product. It can be water, it can be any other kind of fluid, it can be gas or any other material for household activities and also for the industrial activities for feeding all those things. And once we have the pipeline and we can have the network to for the convents it is very very easy it is a cakewalk in order to supply those materials and the products include whatever can be conveyed fluids gas plates powders and more even the coal powders and other things are also can be 
conveyed people are using the latest one in terms of that that is called pipe conveyor it is not a conventional pipe is some modification associated with that so coal dust can be conveyed from the port to the power plants or loading devices and rails through pipe conveyors so in pipes also we can utilize the tubes we can utilize so many kind of critical conveying activity and what is tube it refers to round square here lies the difference not only round but square rectangular even oval hollow sections used for pressure equipment where high pressure that means criticality is there tubes for critical one the standard one is ordinary one is pipe but critical one with high pressure requirements it will be tube for pressure equipment for mechanical applications and for instrumentation systems there are many biomedical instrumentation uh, cases where the tubes are required like say different devices like say art lang machine and other things many many in order to deal with all the supply of the fluids in critical pressure and all those stringent conditions tubes are very much required so tubes are indicated mainly with outer diameter wall thickness in inches or millimeters and some cases inner diameters and the bus pressures and the material of all those things but mainly outer diameter and wall thickness so the reference i have already told that pipe is a round tubular distribute to distribute fluids and designated by nps nominal pipe size and that represents a rough indication of the pipe conveying capacity we are dealing with those conveying capacity because pipes are utilized for conveying fluids like say conveyor belts are designated by the tonnage per hour conveying capacity and that is true for pipes also a tube is a round rectangular squared or oval so other geometries other than round one it is also there and it is specified by od and wall thickness expressed in inches and millimeters whatever put forward even in the earlier slide so what is nominal pipe size when it comes to the measurement of the pipe it is a measure by the inside diameter often called the nominal diameter inside diameter is called the nominal diameter and that is represented by nps non nominal pipe size and it is a north american set of standard sizes of the pipe so as north america is used that and that is also de facto standards for many of the other countries so nps nominal pipe size and that is related to the inside diameter and the term nominal refers to the pipe in non specific terms and identifies the inside diameter with a non dimensional number some number which is not uh, related not represented by the dimensions but every number corresponds to a fixed dimension that is the nps this is the standards followed in north america and as they are developed so many of the countries follow these standards so this is the display of all those standards nps1 there is nps2 nps3 4 12 and they have all fixed od if nps1 is told then od is known and with some kind of other designations like sch40 sch80 and other things where od is the same for nps1 but the wall thickness is different id and all those things are different and the standards representation of all those uh, abbreviation are necessary and sufficient if anybody mention these nps1 sch40 that means all things other things are understood and they are sufficient in the standards and the handbook they are described in that way so we don't have to write more things associated with that and that as defined the inside diameter is determined the outside diameter and wall thickness also because if we know the wall thickness and outside diameter definitely we can go for inside diameter 
and the most important mechanical uh, parameters for the pipe is the pressure rating what level of pressure it can walk and the ill strength and the ductility the material where the pipes are made and their ductility has to be understood and that has to be represented and that is important for knowing the what type of pressure it can handle the most important mechanical parameters are all those things and the standard combinations of pipe nominal sizes and wall thickness those are all schedules are conveyed by some standards ASME and these are all represented in their documentation so these are all uh, difference of these uh, steel pipe and steel tubes so already mentioned OD and the schedule and the wall thickness are there and according to that they are mentioned for both pipe and steel tube and those uh, wall thickness has a definite role to play in selections the main difference between pipe and tube is that pipe is on round only and where tubes are round rectangular square oval or other things and there are uh, the production ranges and the tolerance and all those things are mentioned and there are lies little differences between them so all those things are associated with the different uh, part where the materials and those things are differentiated between tube and pipe i'm not going into much of the details of that so one can see the pipe manufacturing strategies the strategies are in one class it is a welded medium or low pressure application why because these welded joints may not be great for high pressure applications so non critical applications weld or medium pressure applications people do that but for simplest uh, seamless uh, things are there for high temperature and pressure related applications because high temperature may be the welding Shining may not be great, reliable and high pressure situations also. So those welded constructions are important or followed wide, uh, widely in pipeline constructions with general purpose where criticality is not there. And the strategies are BART or electric welding of the cold forged or rolled steel. Electric welding, BART welding or cold one in case of uh, polymers also you can do sometimes cold one sometimes hot one and the vulcanization temperature above and all those things can be done for the rubber hoses and pipes and this also can be done some kind of butt welding with the rolled steel this is related to the welded type of joint but in case of the seamless joints there are critical applications in hydraulic equipment where huge amount of pressures will be dealt with and again boiler because there is a very big safety issues so joints has to be all those pipe manufacturing has to be very very robust in order to withstand the exorbitant pressure of those boilers and the methods are many and Germany being the one of the pioneer in terms of manufacturing of those things so they have their own terms of piercing I am not going into that details but main uh, standard form of producing seamless pipes no joints extrusion very popular then continuous casting long long lengths of those pipes and tubes can be manufactured by continuous casting line centrifugal casting so there is a special type of casting where all those molten metal are rotated in order to form those hollow things inside so the pipes can be the piercing and there are some variety associated with the German manufacturers then spinning, swaging and all those things are associated with the manufacturing methods of pipes and tubes for the seamless cases. And what is butt weld? It is a type of weld which is uh, for the non-critical pipes it is used. A butt weld is a type of weld where butt end of the workpiece, pipes or tubes is welded to another with the same plane circumferentially. In the circumference it is joined together and it is the most common type of joint that is used in the piping systems in big pipelines where lot many not critical pressures are there gas pipelines whatever India is proposing Iran Pakistan India pipeline unfortunately that is not uh, materialized 
So all those kind of maybe those uh, pipelines of we we that on the land from Russia to different parts of Europe. So all those ends can be butt welded, and this is a common type of joint that is used in piping systems. So one can see some of the photographs in the left side one can see a typical butt welding of those pipes ensuring the leakage one but definitely for the non critical pressures so this kind of butt welding circumferentially it is done so on the basis of that it is done and the right side one can see those schematic things associated with those pipes joining activity butt weld and the middle portion where the beads and other things are associated with those pipes with the reinforcement with this width penetration reinforcement and the entire bead geometry is shown in a small figures sorry for a smaller font size of those bead geometries one can see this is the <coughs> method how <coughs> the polythene pipes are butt welded some some attachment is provided and ensuring those butt weld positions are joined together in a reliable fashion so that the leakage and other things will not take place so some attachments are there and it is fed together so that the joints and other things are lasted maybe a little bit of heating will be there to ensure the proper joining at the places and the joint will be of the butt weld variety the next one we can see the different uh, cross sections different cross sections which can be manufactured by extrusion and here we will find it out that some position of the mandrel this mandrel is important this mandrel is very important so that it is resultant of the producing the hollow sections mandrel is responsible if the mandrel is not there it will be solid one solid cross section but we want tubes and pipes where hollow sections are there so in the one part it is pushed together by the ram with some velocity finite velocity and force and that will force the mandrel in a container and where the dies are there and dies will determine the what will be the outer diameter mandrel will determine what will be the inner diameter and with its ram assisted uh, force and pressure the movement it will ensure these manufacturing of those pipes and there can be of a two type varieties one variety is these uh, fully hollow sections and another variety is semi hollow sections so all sections can be produced and this is a direct extrusion process because the movement of the direction of the ram and production of those pipes and tubes or the product is in the same if it is opposite definitely it is an indirect extrusion or backward extrusion some people call it and this is the extruders is a screw based extruders in the hopper those granules and other things are put across and they are mixed with some heaters the screw those those screw typical construction association of the circumference of the screw they are responsible of proper mis mixing and because of the heaters they will melt so initial it is a feed zone the next one it is a melting zone and the third one it is a melt pumping zone and this is produced this is forces all those things through the die and from the die itself it comes out with the appropriate shape and then subsequent solidification will ensure the production of that and if the mandrel is associated with we can produce hollow pipes and tubes so this is a typical method of producing pipes and tubes by extrusion but here mandrel is not shown mandrel has to be there in order to ensure this hollow space in between those pipes and tubes so extrusion is the method that produces the largest volume of plastic products largest very productive process 
and they are generally long, uniform, solid or hollow complex cross sections. Sometimes complex things are also produced by extrusion. And here we can see these different kind of things uh, of extrusion. One is impact extrusion. In one go it will be done. Another one is the indirect extrusion where the direction of the motion of the punch and the direction of the product flow is in opposite direction. So, this is called the indirect type of extrusions and some combination of forward and backward also can be done with some typical kind of cases and configuration where both things are matched together in order to get that. The things will be much clearer if we see the next solid representation. So, one can find it out that with indirect extrusion with those ramps coming there with the blank space and that way it is just pressurizing and backward flow will be there indirect extrusion and these kind of hollow pipes will be produced and in one go and that is why it is called impact extrusion. It is not a gradual pressure impact within very short span of time these punch is pressing all those materials against those typical die and indirect extrusion is happening and there are lot lot many products n number of varieties of the products are available in the market with different shapes and sizes if it is round it is pipe and if it is non round it is tubes so tubes inclusive of roundness and other kind of things and many application many many component requiring those kind of products widely available extensively available in the market and they are produced mostly by the extrusion process. And one more thing is that the spinning process spinning process is done with some kind of support mandrel inside and just like a rotate it and then the rollers are there to press it against those support structures which is rotating and according to that one can produce good surfaces of those external surfaces as well as internal surfaces. External surfaces are producing by rotating all those things against some structures inside that is called external spinning and if it is done for the inside surfaces whatever the sketches are represented that is called internal tube spinning and this way they are produced and good quantities and sometimes very good finish and other things will be done by produce through this process. So, that is all thank you very much for having patient hearing and we have discussed about only the rudimentary part of manufacturing of these tubes and pipes which are essential for the development of the country or supplying all sorts of materials conveying those things in different applications. Thank you.